Head of the CIA does not appear to be in line with President Obama's assessment of the war against ISIS. John Brennan telling Congress that ISIS is larger than Al Qaeda ever was and that our current strategy has not done much of anything to lower this ongoing threat. Rob O'Neill is a retired Navy SEAL and a Fox News contributor, and he is my guest now in studio. And Rob, thanks for coming back thanks for having me, Bill. here. I want you to listen Appreciate to the president, okay. and we're going to hear right after him John Brennan on this very okay. topic here. Watch. See, this president undersells the threats. He tries to, he says, there's no evidence this man was directed by ISIL. ISIL is still strong in the minds of twisted people like this. They still follow al Baghdadi's call to attack in place. All right, that's Senator Lindsey Graham there. So let's go ahead and play the, um, uh, the president's comments with John Brennan. Watch. ISIL is on defense. ISIL's ranks are shrinking as well. Their morale is sinking. As one defender, uh, as, as one defector said, ISIL is not bringing Islam to the world, and people need to know that. Unfortunately, despite all our progress against ISIL on the battlefield and in the fight realm, our efforts have not reduced the group's terrorism capability and global reach. Right. So we had a bit of a bonus there with Senator Lindsey Graham. Sure. He's saying a lot of what you have been talking about. But just take the president's comments there. ISIL ranks are sinking. Are they? Uh, they're not sinking. The, the president's giving a speech based on politics and kind of what people want to hear, whereas the director of the CIA is saying what's actually happening on the ground. And right there just kind of shows you the conflict with, uh, you know, one between the other. The CIA is actually, they're, they're more prepared, less politically correct to say what's happening. It just shows the mm -hmm. kind of the disconnect between the administration and the, uh, the agency. Well, you and you, other, have, other you have contacts overseas. I do. Still. What are they telling you? Well, I mean, they're telling me we lost a great man in, in Chuck Keating a few, uh, few weeks ago yeah. fighting. Um, ISIS in Iraq uh, because they were, you know, lacking the proper air support they needed. You know, they were getting overrun, and as the United States in 2016, we do not get overrun. But we're at a point now where it's the political correctness. The some of these pilots that are dropping over there are doing it on their own accord, risking their own careers and you know lives just because they're not they're not getting the proper. But the authority. suggestion, Rob, is that less people from the West are going to join the fight. No, there's, is that true? That's or not, not that's not true at all. There there, there are people uh, from this country from. Or Western European countries that are being recruited just because of what's happening in Raqqa. I've got friends on the ground that have told me they were fighting them. And normally, what we do, we'll, there's certain ways we intercept different communications. We'll use interpreters who speak the language, be it Arabic or whatever the language. They didn't need interpreters because the fighters they're fighting are speaking English. Mm -hmm. So they've got uh, English speaking fighters there and they're fighting them right now. This President is, Obama said on Monday, we're firing on all cylinders. We're not firing on all cylinders. That's not the case. We know that we need. A lot, and there's a lot of people are starting to come around to it that we're going to need American-led boots on the ground in Syria. Once you take out the capital of Syria and some of the divine uh, stuff that they got going on, the rest is going to fall into place. But as long as they have their, they have an Islamic state. That's what they wanted. This, they're the first group to do it in 90 years since they've been trying, including the start of the Muslim Brotherhood. They've started the Islamic state. It is a state. They've got taxes. They've got hotels. They've R&R for their troops. They've got schools. Uh, it's a real state. It's there. And whether or not we, you know, we can talk about the elephant in the room, or we can pretend it's not there. But eventually, you know, it's going to, it's going to. You it's believe that American here. troops are going uh, yeah, back on the, the Ameri they, in greater numbers. Well, they will need to eventually, whether it's this generation or the next. But as long as this Islamic State continues to grow. Um, they're going to continue to fight. I mean, all they're doing right now, even the guy in Orlando, he was not directed, it wasn't planned in Syria, but he knows that they've been saying, all you need to do if you're in favor of the Islamic State is don't just kill, but be seen killing. Get it on TV. You're doing exactly what we want. And that's, that's what they want. And it's going to happen again. John Brennan said they've gone from 19 to 25,000 fighters down to 18 to 22,000 fighters. I, I thought that headline was remarkable for how minimal it was. Minimal. I yeah, mean, yeah. had he said we've cut them in half, I'd say, OK, yeah, hey, progress. it's working. Sure. The cylinders are firing. No, they're, they're not, especially at the, at the way that we can defeat these people. We fought them. I've personally fought them before when they called themselves Al Qaeda in Iraq. They weren't very good when we met. I was never impressed when we met them. We fought them. We crushed them. But right now, we kind of backed off. And now they, they, they're recruiting people by proving they can't be touched in their capital of Raqqa and different cities like Dubuque around uh, around uh, northwestern Syria. As long as they have Senator, them, Senator Richard Byrd from North Carolina yesterday said, we cannot accept San Bernardino. And we cannot accept Orlando as the new normal. Well, I mean, we can say that as long as we want, but candlelight vigils and, and we are Paris aren't going to do anything. You need to meet force with force at the point of origin. And uh, I mean, which was his point. Yeah, but we, he's mean, not accepting this. But I mean, it, we're not accepting it, but it happened again. It, you know, it happened in Orlando. And as a little stuff, uh, too, I mean, I feel bad for the migrants, the people that are actually trying to flee this area. But 
ISIS has said that not only will we, but I mean, not only do we want to, but we will use the migrant policies and the immigration policies to bring fighters to the West. They're doing it right now. They're mm -hmm. planning it right and now, and we're John, letting them in. John Brennan referred to that. Last point here. Uh, the president's term is ending in seven months. Yes. ISIS will still be here. ISIS. For a very long time. Uh, and this is part of the legacy of this administration. It is part of the legacy, too. And regardless of who's elected, uh, it's going to land on the desk of the next president. And they need to decide how to deal with it. And just a greater realization, it's not something of political correctness where we can or can't say Sharia or Jihad. It's are we going to fight the Jihad now or are we going to fight it in a couple well, of years? It's up to voters to figure out whether or not it's Trump or Clinton who has the best strategy. Rob, thank you. Absolutely. Rob O'Neill with us Appreciate here in studio.